Alright, so now we're finally ready to start talking about the ranch cutter method, which is the most popular and most useful method for ordinary differential equations. So the ranch cut of fourth order, or simply abbreviated as RK4, is probably one of the most, yeah, it is the most popular algorithm for solving ordinary differential equations, and the reason is that it is very stable, and that means that it doesn't exp it doesn't diverge away from the from the exact solution like the Euler method does. It is actually quite stable because it retains the same shape and uh, it does not diverge like that. So so the Euler method is very unstable because it tends to do that kind of thing where it diverges and it essentially just explodes. So. The good thing about Ranch Cut is that it is very accurate and it, it can be used to solve virtually any ordinary differential equation, even a non-linear one, which can be quite tricky. But the only, the only issue with it is that obviously it's not very well documented in terms of how to implement it. I mean, there's a lot of places where you can find how to derive it from first principles. It's quite a long process, so I'm not going to go into detail into that. I'm just going to show you the algorithm and exactly how to implement it in Octave for MATLAB, which I think is the one thing that is lacking the most when it comes to examples and resources. So the first thing we need to notice is that this only works for first order differential equations, much in the same way that the only method only works for first order. So we're going to get an equation in, the, in this form. We're going to solve for the first derivative in terms of a function of x and y. And then we're going to get a function. This is basically our initial value, so our initial condition. And the update equation, the equation that we put inside a loop, is going to be this one. So the next value of y is going to be equal to the previous value of y plus this sum of terms here. So k1 all the way to k4 are basically broken down into these four expressions here. h is the step size, by the way, so this is just uh, conventional notation. h is just the step size that we choose. So what we do is we grab our k1, that's the first coefficient we calculate. So we're going to put in the values of xi and yi into the function, which is whatever expression we have here for the first derivative. And then we're going to calculate k1. Then we're going to calculate k2 by using the same function, but now we're going to put in the values of xi plus h2 over 2 and then yi plus k1, so we need k1 in here to be able to calculate k2, and then the same sequence repeats for k3, we're going to have these values into the function, and then for k4 we're just going to have this, so in the end we're going to add up k1 all the way to k4, put them into this equation, and then calculate the next value in line, and then repeat the whole process over and over again until we have completed our whole, our entire loop essentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a very simple example. This is the same example that we looked at with the Euler method. So this is an exponential decay problem. We have this function here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to transform this into an, uh, a usable equation that we can put into our RK4 algorithm. So first things first, this is already in the form derivative equals to some function. So we're going to have the following. Let's call our function of t and n is just going to be equal to minus k times n so that's very straightforward no dependency on t whatsoever which is good now the next thing is of course calculating our k1 values so we're going to have k1 is going to be equal to this function so we're going to have let me just put it here and i believe oh yes i made a mistake here so there should all also be a h here so don't forget to, to multiply the step size by the function itself here, otherwise you will get the wrong answer. So the step size goes multiplies the function in all of these terms. And now what we're going to do is, and also there there is a little bit of a confusion in notation. So if you put your h here, essentially you don't need to put it here. So the, the, the thing is that you can factorize the h out of this expression, put it outside, but if you put it into each one individually, then it, it's kind of trivial to put it here because you don't want to multiply h by itself. And that's the other thing. So the notation changes from place to place. A lot of books don't use the h here, a lot of them do. So it can be a, a little bit confusing, but all of them work the same. So this is the one I prefer. So what we're going to do is write k1, so we're going to have some h here, 
times the function t at point i and at i. So obviously the first value is just going to be based on the initial time and then the initial value for population. So those are the things that we need to choose. So first of all, let's choose a step size. Let's say 0 0.1. Then let's choose a initial time 0. And let's say it goes all the way to 20 seconds. Actually, let's make it 10 because I think 20 might be too much. Let's choose a value for k. And not to confuse it with this k, this is just the rate constant of this equation here. Let's make it 0 0.5. And obviously the population size in the beginning, let's make it 100. All right, so obviously it's a bit trivial to write down the equations by hand. So let's take out Octave and start writing things in there. So the first thing is H. We said it's going to be equal to 0 0.1. Now we're going to have the value of our rate constant, which is going to be K 0 0.5. And we're going to have T is going to go from 0 in step size h all the way to 10 seconds and now we're going to have what else the initial popu population which is n0 equals to 100 so i believe that's all the parameters we need now let's write down the function that we need so f of t and n is going to be written here so let's call it f and the way you specify functions in a single line in MATLAB and Octave is by doing at then followed by brackets and you put all your variables in there so let's put t and n in here so basically this is where our expression is going to go so we have k times n that's all we need and of course we need to specify that n is going to be the initial value but it doesn't matter with, with this kind of notation with this kind of um, declaration of variables we don't actually need to declare n before the function it, it just takes it in as some variable so this is a really nice thing okay so next thing is to create an empty vector of n so make it zeros of the same length of t and now we're gonna basically specify the initial value of that so that's going to be n zero okay so now what we need to do is we need to open a loop so let's say for i equals to 1 all the way to length of t minus 1 because we're using remember that we have y i plus 1 so we want to um, make sure we don't go over the size of the array so the the first element let's call it capital k1 what is this going to be well this is going to be the function evaluated at that so we're going to have h times the function and now we put in the argument. So basically t of i, that is going to be the first value of time. So t at uh, the ith value of the time vector. And now we're going to have ni, which is the ith value of the n vector. And that's going to become our k1 value. Now our k2 is going to be h times the function at ti plus h over 2. And then we're going to have ni plus k1 over 2. All of this in brackets. Now k3 we're going to do the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste in there. Now this is going to be the same here. This is going to change to k2. And then for k, obviously let's make sure that we label everything properly. This is going to be k3. Now we get rid of this. So I'm just following the formulas that I have here plus h and now for the final one we're going to write down the the solution itself which is this one so that's the update equation so n i plus one is going to be equal to n i plus one over six times this expression so we have k one plus two times k two plus two times k three plus k four and now we're going to clo close the loop. So this is our algorithm here. We have a runch cut algorithm inside the loop. And this is the fourth order accuracy. Loop. So now we go down here and let's plot our solution. So let's have T and N. 
and let's put some labels on this so x label time in seconds y label population size and then we have title population decay and I believe that should be it so let's see how this looks so let's run the program and now let's give it some names so rk4 decay and there you have it so you can see clearly that you have your solution here so that looks pre pretty good actually because we know that this is going to be an exponentially decaying function so that looks really good so let's see how it compares to the exact solution now so if we go here we know that the exact solution should look like this so let's put it somewhere here let's say exact solution now let's call it n exact equals to n naught times exponential of minus k times t and now we're gonna put that in here exact t n now we need to give it a legend to differentiate the two plots so let's have t n actually this should be so the first one is the exact one the second one is rk4 and now we should be able to see what this looks like so we should be able to compare the two solutions hopefully so i believe the okay so here we have it now you will notice that this is actually really really good i mean you cannot even tell the difference between the two solutions even if I zoom in really really closely you cannot tell the difference and this is a really really nice thing about the Runge Kata method is that it's so much more accurate than the Euler method there's no way for you to tell the difference unless you actually do the relative error calculation which is what we'll do next but you can see that it is so well behaved and notice something else we're using a step size of 0 0.1 which is ridiculously large considering that we're solving a problem in in this interval so let's say we expand this to something like 30 seconds and let's see how that looks okay so now we have expanded this to 30 seconds and still our solution looks reasonably good so i would say this is a really good solution so let's say we increase the step size to something like 0 0.8 obviously at that point we should start to see some um, differences between the two plots and let's bring it a little bit closer so instead of that let's make it something like five I just want to see if there's any noticeable difference between the two plots and still it's very hard to tell the difference so in order to actually assess what this looks like so let's just do the classic all the way to 10 seconds let's do the relative error so let's calculate the relative error between the two here so as we know we have absolute value and now here we're going to have the following so n exact and we do this semicolon thing in brackets minus n and then we do the dot slash n exact So I believe this should be enough brackets. So now what we do need to do is just essentially plot the two of them. So let's make this subplot 1, 2, 1. And now I'm just going to do the same for the second plot. Subplot 1, 2, 2. And now we're going to plot just the error. So in this case we don't need a legend. This is going to be relative error percentage and error in solution so let's see what that looks like okay so now we get an error and you can see here this is so much better than the Euler method I mean with the Euler method and this step size we would have been getting something like 12% error by the time we get to 10 seconds here we're getting 0 0.002 that's so good I mean 
you cannot really get better than this. And in fact, let's make the, the step size something like 0 0.01. I just want to see, I just want to show you how good this method is. Now look at the error here. You cannot even tell the difference anymore. But look at the error here. This is 10 to the minus 11. I mean, it's not even, it's not even significant anymore. We can completely neglect the error and say this solution is actually perfect. So this just comes to show how the ranch cutter method is so much better than the Euler method. And in fact, we're going to see how it is, it is amazing for solving pretty much any kind of ordinary differential equation. Even nonlinear differential equations that have no exact solution can be solved rather well using the ranch cutter four-folder method. Now, before I finish this video, I want to mention that there are other orders of ranch cutter. So obviously there's a second order one, third order, fifth order, sixth order, and so on. And you might think, well, how about something like eighth order ranch cutter? I mean, obviously you can derive it and there, there might be some references on it. But the thing is that it doesn't really get that much better after this point. Because look at what you're doing here. This, this ranch cutter method is using four points, four consecutive points to calculate the solution. So it is a really, really accurate one. And it is, it is the perfect trade-off between computation time, so computation efficiency, and also just in general, just accuracy of your solution. So we're going to continue doing more examples with, with the ranch cutter method, and we're going to see how we can solve higher order differential equations using it.